Because as you say, we should watch how our words and actions are perceived. Yeah. Uh, I will give you a story on watching your words and how your actions are perceived. When I was in law school, we do um, internships. We call them you know, clerkships, law clerkships. And I worked at a firm that had all these, um, all, you know, it was basically all men except for me and one other woman. And one afternoon uh, for lunch, all these names were paged. And so here was Jimmy and here's Billy Bob and here's someone else. And all the names were paged but me. And they were all the clerks other than me. And, you know, I said, well, that, that's odd. Maybe I'll walk by the lobby and see if maybe they just forgot me or I didn't hear me. And I said, hey, guys. And they said, hey, we'll see you after lunch. And so they all went and had lunch without me, which, you know, in the world of the law clerk, you're supposed to try to mingle and get to know them. Well, they came back, and they had gone to a, a place that's a little, not, but probably not some place that I would have gone. A men's place. A men's place. And afterwards, I went and talked to my managing partner, and I said, you know, this is a good time for us to all get to know each other and see if we could work together. And lunches are about the only time we do, and we only go to lunch every so often. Um, I don't want to miss the next one. So I thought that was the end of it. Well, it wasn't quite the end of it. Um, that day, three guys came by and they said, hey, tomorrow night we are going, um, we're going out after work, and we definitely want you to come. And so I said, okay, great. You know, all this has been subtle. Well, guess what? We went to their haunt that they went to once a week, and guess what was featured? It was lingerie night. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, so they, you know, got back at me. They are kind of teasing me, I guess. But Linda, they're lucky you didn't slap them with a sexual harassment lawsuit. Right. And so one of the things just to be thinking about, and that's pretty extreme, but when you start talking to a lot of people that have worked, you know, a lot of things happen like that. What they meant is a joke or we'll get you back or whatever is, you know, really could have put, put them in a risk for lawsuit. Now, and the rest of the story is, Lori and Larry, I decided that we could not have enough fresh popcorn. So about the time when the model would come by, it would be time to refill the popcorn. And I would make sure I would go and get it for the table. So we had a table full of popcorn by the end of, of leaving. But, yeah, you know, watch how those actions can be perceived. And that's the to me as simple as, you know, um, leaving somebody out on a lunch or not including them in a conversation. Just make sure that you're sensitive. All right. Now, you say we should also be watching our emails and social media posts. We've been talking a lot this morning about Twitter because of its role in the Iranian uh, reporting coverage. Right. Uh, but, yeah, we, we do need to be careful about what we put on Facebook. and it's, it's all archived, and a lot of employers now are going out and they're actually checking and seeing what their um, applicants are putting out there. They're also checking on what their employees are putting out there. So be careful what you post. Remember with email, it can always be forwarded, even if it doesn't mean to be. And well, you know, it, it's so well documented now. Do you think some people are still so obtuse they don't get the notion that, well, if I do this, somebody who shouldn't see it might see it? I mean, wow. Yeah, you know, Larry, it's funny. They build these communities on Facebook and some of these other social medias, and they feel like they're, with their, they're hanging with their gang. Yeah. And they tell them, you know, hey, I'm going to go get my hair cut or whatever it is. It's amazing you let down your guard, yeah. and, and we all need it's, – it's just like um, the next one, which is watching jokes. You know, just because five or six of you are telling crazy jokes doesn't mean that everybody around you enjoys it. And so we let down our guard, and we think that, you know, we forget that there's people that aren't in our inner circle – that may not feel comfortable with it. To ask David Letterman about that. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, good example. Uh, uh, you say to watch our bullying or power plays. Do some people not know that they're bullies or that they're pulling a power play? They don't, or if they intentionally do it. Um, you know, they could keep information away from somebody. They could keep you out of a conversation. Watch those bullying and power plays. They always come back to get you. They always do because then you will be the person that won't be included on some vital information. People have an unusual, you know, it's just the world, life, whatever it is. Things do self-correct. When you feel you've been bullied in that way, what, what's your best course of action? Confront the person, hey, why'd you leave me out? Or, or why, did you, why was that email specifically aimed at me or it seemed to be aimed at me? Yeah, once you can do that or twice. Mm -hmm. But after that, you might have to cover yourself. You might have to have a friend that's getting the emails that'll copy you. Oh, okay. You know, you might have to escalate up. But there's, 
you know, if you're being left out of the information or if you're being talked about, that's as bad as someone pushing you down on the playground in the workplace. Hmm. So maybe time to look for another job? Or it may be time to work around that person. Because if that person's doing that to you, they, they may be on the way out. He or she may be on the way out. Oh, maybe someone else recognized their poor behavior too. Correct. Yeah. Or they may need to recognize yeah. it. And yeah. there's some subtle ways of doing that. You know, I, I wish I could have attended the meeting. I didn't know about it. Oh, well, Fred was supposed to have sent you that, that email. Really? Well, for some reason, I'm not getting those emails. Mm, that's yeah. good. I, yeah. would, I would work to get Fred out of the office. You know, Absolutely. I, I, I like my job. You go, Fred. <laughs> you got it. In this, time, it's, in this day and age, you've got to pull your weight, you've got to be ethical, and you've got to watch your back. Will you give us follow when we're watching our mouths and what we're <laughs> saying? Um, the first one is the media rule. Explain that, Linda. Well, this one is if it was said by you and Larry on television or somebody else, you know, how would you feel? If, if this was printed, if your words were printed in a newspaper or if they were um, said by a news anchor, how would you feel? How would you explain yourself? And if you can't, you need to rethink the words that you're using and choose them more carefully. Mm. The next one's probably the general rule. And this is just the, you know, the golden rule. Do, do as others as you'd like them to do unto you. Um, generally, it, why be a jerk? <laughs> it's, um, you know, really watch what you're saying and, and be respectful. If it doesn't build someone up, then don't say it. Uh, yeah, right. Because, you know, what's the purpose of it? 